in this lecture we are going to learn about concept of processes in operating system so what are process this is what we are going to answer in this lecture so what a process how is it managed by the operating system you will get answer of these two questions so first of all what is a process a process is basically a program in execution okay so and that so basically if you write a piece of code or any application is basically a piece of code and then when it is being executed so that is called a process and process execution must be sequential okay so it must start from the first line of the code and continue okay, in sequential fashion and now what you need for the process is that the process is basically as we told that it is program in execution so that program has a few lines of code in it so which line the cpu is executing so that needs to be stored and that is stored in your program counter okay so which line of code is in executed which is the next line to be executed these are stored in the program counter stack so as you know most of the code the programming languages have functions in them so to store local variables the function arguments okay function arguments and some local variables and so on or return value in a function so we have stack memory space for storing them and then we have a data section for storing the global variables so these are the things okay that are there for a process next what happens is so it has the process as we discussed so it has a program code that is stored in the text section okay so your program that is being executed is stored in the text section and currently a current activity including program counter processor registers so program counter stores the line of the code that is being executed stack contains function parameters as discussed what are the function parameters that are passed those are put onto the stack the return address okay of uh, where you need to return so if i call a function then i need to know that after executing the function where will i return so those return addresses local variables so all these are stored on the stack then you have a data section where you store the global variables and you also have a heap for a process you have a heap where you store your dynamically allocated objects okay or data so for dynamic allocation you have basically the heap and what is a program so program is a passive entity okay so which is not active while the process is the program that is active now that is being executed and your execution of a program can start with a serial argument command line argument uh, command line entry or by gui mouse clicks and one program in fact one program can have several processes okay so these are the things about process now let's try to see what's next so we will see how the processes are allocated memory so there is memory for the process and you have the stack so you there is some maximum amount of space that is given to your process and in that it maintains one stack where we told we use it to store the return values the function arguments and local variables so on it grows downwards your heap where we store the dynamic objects so like when you call in c like m malloc okay so these basically these functions store on the heap or new variable you call in c++ they store those data in the heap then we have a data where we have the global variables text where you have the code so this is how it is stored in your memory and then let's see so process states so what are the states of a process 
so process again so it goes through various process so first is new a process is being created then the state is new running instructions are being executed for that particular process then it is in the running state waiting the process is waiting for some event to occur so that it can run again and ready the process is waiting to be assigned to a processor so process is there it has some code to be executed and when you are it is assigned to a processor it will execute it termination state the process is finished so this is shown in a very beautiful figure so you are here so let's try to analyze this a bit so a process is there a new process is created okay so it will get a process id the pid the new process is there it's admitted so now it goes to a ready queue okay so from there what happens now lot of processes are waiting in the ready queue then based on the scheduler algorithm they will go into the running state where they will start a processor will be assigned to that process and it will start running then what happens if in this state what happens is so it goes from here ready to running state if it is assigned a processor then if it is complete it can go to the terminated state but let's say if some interrupt comes okay then it goes again into the ready queue wait again okay another thing is in, in some input output if your process you asked it to do some input output the program then it goes to the input output wait and in the wait statement so it is waiting there again when input output is complete so it will basically come to the ready queue again and again it will wait for the processor to run it so this is how it keeps on going till the process is terminated so this is the diagram for process state and then let's look so process control block this is one very important thing so but i think we will cover it in our next lecture so process control block we will see in the next lecture here till now we have studied about the process how what is it is used for what memory it requires and what is the state diagram for it next time we will learn about process control block